الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب continuing with the treaties of the Alama Sheikh Abdul Masin Al Abad حفظ الله تعالى رفقن أهل السنة بأهل السنة أو أهل السنة be gentle with one another and it has come to my attention, which is very relevant to this treaty, it's about a, a particular brother recently uh, made some statements, made some statements that were incorrect. And then he admitted his mistakes, that he was hasty and he should have been careful. And this brother apparently is a, a talab al -ilm. I don't, I don't know him, but this is just uh, what was related to me by someone who was trustworthy. And the brother went back on his statements that he made a mistake and he uh, overstepped his bounds and he wasn't cautious in what he said and he exaggerated. But he corrected himself is the point. However, many of the websites and many of uh, various individuals who are responsible in the Dawah they went and they spread his mistake around the world throughout the internet and so it's imperative for us to mention this to, to, to highlight this and what we can learn from this one of the things that we learn for one know for sure this is a mistake that if an individual makes toba to Allah and they've also made a public toba they recanted what they said and said, yes, I made a mistake and yes, I was hasty. If this is the case, then of course this person's mistake should not be spread. This person's mistake should not be spread. And the brother should not be attacked or the individual who makes statements makes a uh, mistake and then they make toba and they repent from their mistakes to their Lord, Azzawajal. And they correct themselves in front of the people. They should also not be uh, belittled and disparaged and spoken about and refuted and etc. Because they've made, they went back on their statements. And if you think any single individual from amongst the people who spread those mistakes is free from mistakes, then you're incorrect and you need to check your Akita. You need to check your creed. What do you believe? Do you believe the brothers who spread this are free from mistakes? When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayna khatayna tawabun. And that's very applicable to what we're talking about. The Prophet Ali, after salatu wa sallam said, All the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes is those who repent. So it's upon us to repent. And apparently this partic in this particular situation, which I only recall calling from hearsay, and relating from hearsay, uh, this particular individual went back on his statement. So, in Tehena, the, the, the affair should be over. But no, the people are backbiting him, slandering him. And then what happens is the people will disparage him. Because this person, I've not heard of this person, but this person apparently is a student of knowledge in, uh, in one of the places that are uh, the esteemed places of seeking knowledge. So this person may not have been heard of, but perhaps in the future, and this will damage his reputation and calling to Allah Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can raise him. And this is a test for him. But the point being is how should we operate? Should we have enmity? Should we feed the, uh, the, the fitna and fuel the fire? Or should we stop? Khalas, the brother corrected himself and move on. Move on. Because we're in need, as Sheikh Abdul Masin mentioned in the beginning of the treaties in our first or second dars, he, we mentioned that Ahl Sunnah is Qaliyah. They're few in numbers. And they're not in need of splitting more. And they're not in need of being fewer in numbers. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that. But this is the case that we, we need more people calling the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need more students of knowledge who are benefiting the people, raising up communities. We need that. We don't need less. We don't need a few personalities that are popular and are, are nice and and, and the people are in love with, we don't need that. 
None of that's going to benefit us. They will be forgotten. All of us will be forgotten. Except for those who left behind the three that we mentioned before in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that if a person dies, his deeds cease, except three. Asadaka Jariya, Al Ilm Yun Tafabi. Wawalad in Sarin Yadru Rawal Muslim. This is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet والسلام, said, When a person dies, their deeds cease, except three. The first is continuous charity. The second is knowledge that the people benefit from. So we have the books of the Ulama, we have Imam Nawawi, we have Imam Bukhari, people know Imam Bukhari around the world, they know Imam Nawawi, Ahla Bidda wa Ahla Sunnah know, even the non-Muslims know these names, they know Bukhari, they know Muslim, they know Imam Nawawi, these people are remembered, they know the four Imams, they know Imam Abu Hanifa, they know Imam uh, uh, Malik, they know Imam Shafi'i, they know Imam Ahmed, they know them, why? Because they left beneficial knowledge. And they had sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal. They know Ibn Hazm. They know Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. They know Ibn al-Qayyim. But are they going to know us? We haven't done anything for the deen? All we did, and especially if all we did is make fitna for the people, perhaps we'll be in the books with the Khawarij, maybe. Wa'iyadhan billah. But instead, we want to be on Basira, ilm wa fiqh, and spreading good. And we want to follow the example of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, who said, uh, when he was asked about those people who enter Jannah, who will enter Jannah the most? Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al Jannah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam was asked uh, about what would enter the people into the paradise, the, into paradise the most. He said, Taqullah wa husn al fearing Allah and having good manners. Su'ila nakhthiri ma yurkhal al nas al nar, qala afim wa faraj. And he was asked about that will enter the people, enter the people into the hellfire the most. Of them, we'll find you. the private parts, the mouth and the private parts. And we know from amongst those sins of the tongue is lying, slandering, backbiting, all those things what we see happening in this day and age. If, in fact, I've asked several of the ulama about the issue about the, the internet, okay? Where, who should we listen to? And we have the videos, we've made the videos about it. You can look back on uh, search. On, our, on, on the page and find uh, some of the translations of Sheikh uh, Sheikh uh, Sheikh um, Sheikh Saeed Hafizullah Ta'ala uh, being asked about this. What about beneficial websites? Should we stay away from the websites? And the ulama, many of them have been asked. And a lot of times they say, uh, if you have to go to the internet or if you're going to the internet websites, go to those things, of course, that are going to bring you closer to Allah. They're going to have you memorize um, be in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you go to a website and all it is is speaking about this one, cursing this one, making takfir of this one, talking about uh, whatever, things that are wasting your time, waste and making you feel bad inside, then know that's a sign for you to beware or be cautious. But if you go to a website and it helps you bring, bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it brings you the, the, the statements of the ulama, especially the major scholars. This is what several of the mashayikh said to me about the, the major scholars. Like Shaykh uh, Suleiman al-Rahili mentioned, you know, when, when, uh, when you hear um, statements from students of knowledge or from uh, you go to other places to study the, the religion, compare it to, what you, to, to the books and the statements of Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, Rahmatullah Ali, was Sheikh Muhammad bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, was Sheikh Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah Yarhamahum Jameen. Those those giants, and, and uh, uh, Imam al Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, these great Imams, if you see that what's being said, regardless of it, another scholar, because those four Imams, especially in this time and age, and there was those who were bigger than them, their scholars, and some that lived, and some that live, mashallah, that have ilm and fiqh. But some of these are some of the great imams that compare what you hear and the discussions and the fitna to what you see in those books. And if you don't find there's a relationship, and this is what Sheikh Abdul Masan was saying in the beginning of the treaties, when he was talking about Sheikhana uh, Abdul Aziz bin Baz, and he said, Sheikhana 
Muhammad bin Sa'ad bin Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, you know, that the fitna was under control in their time because these were great imams and people didn't dare raise their head with hizbiyah and raise their head with ta'asim and raise their head with all the other uh, forms of deviation which we see today and the fitna that we see today and Ahl sunnah was not fighting each other as we see today. Today we see uh, pure warfare and, and I say that they're from Ahl sunnah meaning that we have a, a group, some of the brothers from Ahl sunnah and some of the brothers from Ahl sunnah and they're attacking each other's character. And they're belittling each other and they're focusing their energy on taking each other down instead of focusing their energy on building the people up. Calling the people to the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and warning against Ahlul Bidah and warning against mistakes, yes. But not spending all their time doing that and busying the people who don't have the tools to distinguish between Kufr and Shirk or Iman will Kufr or what have you. They don't have the, you know, between Tawheed and, 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 and Shirk. They, don't, they can't distinguish those things. They haven't went in detail about in the books of Aqidah. They haven't sat with the ulama. They, but you're busy in those people with these kind of statements. So-and-so said this. What do you say about this? Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so warned against him. Uh, brother, what do you say about so-and-so? Sister, what do you say about so-and-so? What is this? Instead, what do you say about the Quran? What do you say? Is it the Kalam Allah? Um, la? What, what do you say about uh, uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do we have to practice it? Um, la? What do you say about this? What do you say about Masail Al-Niyya? Masail uh, Faqiyya? You know, this is what we need. This is going to help raise us and raise us with Allah, raise our communities. Raise our communities with Al, wa Fiqh, wa Khayyam. Shaykh Abdul Masin said, half of the law ta'ala, going back to the trees, he, he said, and he's mentioned some of the statements of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, he also said, it is an obligation to understand the speech of a person by using some of it to explain other parts of it. His speech is not taken from just one source, but rather taken from a number of sources. It is also important to consider what a person usually, according to his habit, means and intends when using a particular word. This is the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, that, hey, you should not... Uh, just take a part of a speech, uh, a person's speech, and then you go and say, uh, yep, he's a tekfiri. Yes, he's uh, a khwani. Why? Because he said this, and it's mubhim, or it's mujmil. It's something that's very general, or it's something that's not quite clear. So we're going to take this one part of the statement, and we're not going to look at the rest of what he's saying. It's not the, the manager of the sunnah. That's what Shaykh al-Islam is saying. Go back to Shaykh al-Islam if you have problems with it. Then he said, Ta'ala, both those who criticize others and those that are criticized, neither one is infallible. This is what we said. The Prophet said, Kulu ibn al All the children of Adam make mistakes. Uh, no one is infallible, nor safe from deficiencies and mistakes. It is appropriate to search for perfection. However, this does not mean that we do not benefit from somebody who has some imperfections. Nor do we look to destroy that person. Allahu Akbar. It is not correct to say either the person must be perfect or he is nothing, or either complete light or absolute darkness. Rather, we preserve the light that is dim and try to increase and improve it. These words of wisdom, I don't know why we can't practice that. Why some of the people attack these statements and say it's Mumayr and stuff like that. This is just absolutely uh, ludicrous. It's, 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 it's amazing how far and how extreme in some ways we've become. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us and our brothers. May Allah guide us and our brothers. I mean, this is the case of some of our brothers and sisters. Another group from amongst our brothers and sisters on the other uh, end, they're so, they fit that term almost, if you, if you want to use the term, that they leave the principles of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah refutes Ahl Bidah. Ahl Sunnah uh, calls to this and has this in their minhaj. But some of our brothers and sisters, and they perhaps maybe from Ahl Sunnah, but maybe they're weak, but they leave that. Why, do, why am I talking specifically about them? I'm talking about them, that those who are students of knowledge, those who are who imams in communities. I know brothers, and I love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for their good, and I dislike those mulahadat, those, those mistakes, when they don't speak about Ahl Bidda at all, and they let Ahl Bidda come and speak in their masjid. No, you go speak to Ahl Bidda, and you correct them in their masajid. But do not allow Ahl Bidah to come to your masjid and give a talk and misguide the youth. There's no maslaha in that. There's no maslaha in that. Especially if you don't need their end. 
If you have the tools to where someone in your community from Ahl Sunnah can spread it, you don't need to go to Ahl Bid'ah. You don't need to ask this guy who, uh, the guys who are doing magic tricks. You don't have to ask the other guys who uh, has all their other issues that, that we see with some of, some of the people. May Allah forgive us in them and guide us in them. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. The point being, no one is free from mistakes. No one is free from mistakes. And there's a difference between the mistakes of a Sunni, someone from Ahl Sunnah, someone who's Salafi, and the mistakes of someone who's a Mubtadi'ah, someone who's clearly not on the Midhaj of the Prophet They don't call to the same principles. Someone who calls to Takfir, for example. Someone who's, uh, uh, who is, you know, has new forms of Dawah, or taking a part of the religion and leaving most of the rest, and that is what they are on. That is their methodology for Dawah. Those kind of things, the Khwana Muslimin. Khwana Muslimin is not Salafi. They're not Sunni, so to speak, in the in the more restricted uh, terminology of using Sunni. Sunni to mean someone who adheres to the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. They're Sunni in the sense that they're not Shia in the general use of the term as a as an istilah. But we don't say that they're from Ahl Sunnah. We don't say that Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra or Jamaat Tabliq or Akhwana Muslimin, or various other groups that are coming together as a group or in a jama'ah, or people who hold that creed and that methodology that they are from Ahl Sunnah. We don't say that. But rather we say that their methodology, Yukhalif Ahl Sunnah, their minhaj, it goes against Ahl Sunnah. It differs with the, the minhaj of the Prophet والسلام, Therefore, they are not Salafi. Therefore, they are not from Ahl Sunnah. So these things, my brothers and sisters, that we've been talking about, though, in dealing with these mistakes and so forth, we're talking about dealing with that which is between Ahl Sunnah. Someone who's taken from the same scholars, someone they're coming from the same uh, methodology, they have the same creed, but yet, either there's a difference in an issue, which is not permissible for them to be attacking each other over, or sometimes maybe it is something permiss uh, permissible. You know, it depends on the situation in the, in the group of individuals. The point is, is... Sheikh Abdul Muslim al Abad wrote this treatise to say what? To say, Rifkin Ahl Sunnah, be Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah, O Ahl Sunnah, be merciful with one another or be gentle with one another. That's the point that we want to make is that we all make mistakes. So don't hang people and lynch people and attack people and tarnish people's character and destroy them and belittle them for their mistakes. That's not the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. And we have kathrata adilla, and hopefully we're going to spend, I, I did some excellent reading which to strengthen our treaties. And it was talking about the Sahaba. This is a very beneficial book called Hukum Tabdi'i Fi Masail al Ijtihad. Jamil Jiddan. Very beneficial book. And the one who compiled it and did the research, he mentioned some very important fiqh principles, which is a little bit above our head that for mentioning in this dars. But just talking about when is it permissible? to make tibdeer, uh, to, 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 to declare an innovator over someone who's a mujtahid, someone who's, who is ahlan for ijtihad, that they can make the ijtihad in, in these issues. And he brought some very beautiful principles, and hopefully we'll be able to share that at another time in another place. And it requires some translation and so forth. The sheikh went on to say, Hafizullah Ta'ala, We'll end with this statement, so we'll keep it brief. Here's a quote from the Sheikh, and it's very relevant to us. He said, there exists within these countries, he's talking about countries in the West, some students from Ahl Sunnah possessing little knowledge and are in immense need of seeking beneficial knowledge and remaining safe from the fitna of boycotting due to blindly following criticisms. Allahu Akbar. Let's break this statement down just so we can really understand and we'll lie it's so applicable if you only open your eyes and your ears. He said, there exists within these countries some students from Ahl Sunnah possessing little knowledge and are in immense need of seeking beneficial knowledge. Isn't this the case that we have in the UK? Isn't this the case that we have in America? Isn't this the case that we have in France? Isn't this the case that we have in Belgium and, and wherever and in Germany? Of course it is. MashaAllah, we have some students, we have some that have itqan. We do have some strong students of knowledge. No doubt, I'm not taking away. And we have some brothers there who, uh, you know, we can call mashayikh in, in the sense that they, they have itqan and, and knowledge. I know personally some students of knowledge 
that are very strong, from that are originally Somali, some uh, from Yemen, and that live in America, and, and could be like uh, mashayikh to us in those, those localities. And, and they do lectures around the world, very beneficial, from Ahl Sunnah. So we do have those who have some itqan and some strength, but we're still in need, and they seek knowledge. They're in need of knowledge even, and they're furthering themselves. But, and that's not sufficient to have a handful around all of America, or a handful around the UK, or what have you. But rather, we need more. So the Sheikh said, there exists within these countries some students from Ahl Sunnah possessing little knowledge. This is the case with a lot of our du'at. A lot of our du'at, and I'm not belittling our brothers and sisters, and, and myself. I do a little bit of da'wah, and my knowledge is very little and very limited. And, I, and perhaps I'm talking about people who have more knowledge than me. But what I will say is, in the scale of things, little knowledge. Because a lot of us, you might find taqsir in their fiqh, in their fiqh understand. They haven't even finished one single fiqh book completely. Whereas on the Bidda, you find that they memorize these books. Okay? Or Arabic books, they haven't memorized any of the matun or, or, or what have you. Not memorizing the Quran. And we have many brothers who are big da'is and stuff, and they have memorized little of the Qur'an. I'm not even saying the whole Qur'an. I'm saying little of the Qur'an. Or can't properly read the Qur'an. We've even heard of this. Some particular brothers, and they speak about minhaj a lot, and they speak about this, and they give da'wah, but their reading is, 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 not, is not correct. May Allah forgive us and, them, and guide us in them. That's a big problem. That's a big problem. So we are in need of knowledge, as the Shaykh said, as Imam uh, uh, Abdul Masin al-Abbad, Hafizullah Ta'ala said, he said, suits from Ahl Sunnah possessing little knowledge and are in immense need of seeking beneficial knowledge. So we're in immense need of seeking this beneficial knowledge. And then he said, and remaining safe from the fitna of boycotting due to blindly following criticism. So here's the picture, meaning that we have some brothers, they have little knowledge. Allah's favored them with something. They have more than the general bird people. Some of them have studied. Some of them have not quite studied or, or what have you. But they have a position in Dawah and they have maybe their imams or maybe their dua and they do this and, and alhamdulillah, and this is khair and they spread khair. You know, may Allah preserve us and them and forgive us and them, Ameen. But their knowledge is limited. Their knowledge is li limited. And if they are in a situation where they busy the people with making hajr, boycotting one another, stay away from this one. We put these many posts about so-and-so. We got several mashayikh to speak about this one. We asked a question about him. Don't worry, tomorrow I'm going to ask Sheikh so-and-so to get another fatwa against so-and-so so we can destroy him. I just don't understand what minhaj that is. I don't see that. I didn't see it in the books. I'm still looking. But what I'm seeing is the opposite. Like we're reading from Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. It's not like that. It's not like we should have our intention to destroy people from Ahl Sunnah. Or even if you regard so-and-so as a hizbi, or you say they're attacking the Salafis, or you're saying this or that about them. But you have to come with dalil. And on top of that, what? Then, the other aspects like, uh, that, these, that the ulama say. Aqam alayhi al-hajjah. Establish the proof on him. Call him, because he's known for the Sunnah. But then you attack him, belittle him, get a few statements of the mashayikh by saying whatever you say to them. He's destroyed in the, the community. His reputation is destroyed. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he's doing good, Allah's going to aid him. There's no doubt. Allah's going to aid him in his da'wah. Because he's aiding the deen of Allah azza wa jal. So the point being, we should busy ourselves with beneficial knowledge. And not split due to the blind following of criticism. This is very important because what we have, going back to the, the image we just were saying. So if you ask, it's easy for me. I could call on the phone some mashayikh or some mashayikh. I could give a description of a particular individual, mention his name, and then get a statement from the shaykh maybe. Some mashayikh don't play that. I will tell you this, some mashayikh, they from, you know, and this is a benefit I think, they will not give you a fatwa on a particular individual easily like this. They don't even like those kind of questions. Many, especially a lot of the major mashayikh. Or they'll make tahqiq, they'll, they'll look in there, they'll say, if it is as you say this individual, then such and such and such. So you have to beware. So it's easy for someone to make a description about someone that may or may not be true. They may be lying, they may be making the description to build themselves up and belittle the individual, or they feel the person's too popular in the Tao, or whatever the reason. Their intention is not prep proper. And this causes fitna. And what does it do? Then the people begin to hate that individual because 
you have a statement of Sheikh so-and-so, a statement of Alama so-and-so, mentioned about a particular individual who lives in a far-off place in China, or a far-off place in New Jersey, a far-off place in Seattle, a far-off place in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, or Indonesia. And that person, the good they're doing in that locality is now gone. Why? Because the, the, it was easy for them to get a fatwa. It was easy for them to get a fatwa by making their description. That's why it's on the Talib al-Ilm and uh, the Dua to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a responsibility. It's not just a game and it's not a popularity contest. It is a responsibility that when you ask, and I'll give you an example. When I asked about uh, what, uh, the one um, who makes the ta'wil, uh, Imran Hussein, may Allah guide us in him. I didn't do it out of hassan because I feel he's too popular. I feel he's too popular in that he's misguiding people, yes. That he's a threat to the religion in that sense. He's, he's a threat with the Shabbat. He's spreading his ideology around the youth. And many people who are general Muslims are confused. And they begin to adopt his understanding Islam, which takes you away from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, from Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So yes, that, for the sake of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. I described him as accurately as I could from the little I've heard from him. I wrote it down. I translated. I tried to fear Allah as much as I can in the translation and present it to the sheikh so that the sheikh can deal with that. But this is a thing of Iman, meaning that you should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It involves taqwa. you got to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're doing this, that you're not trying to belittle someone. You'd rather correct someone, and especially if they're from Ahl Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.